Why, hi, welcome to The Christian Contrast, where we talk about how following Jesus leads us to live differently than the world around us. Um, I'm Dan, and here with the first episode of 2023, so Happy New Year, wherever you are. Um, and, and this is probably going to be a shorter episode, although maybe I shouldn't say that because uh, who knows how it'll turn out. But, but I think that this will be a little bit of a shorter episode, and I just want to talk about something that I think is a little bit related to the new year. You, you could say in some ways this is a New Year's resolution type of video, although it's, it's going to be a slightly different because what I want to talk about, I, I'm going to call spiritual grooves. Um, a couple weeks ago, had an episode on spiritual gifts. If you haven't listened to that, I encourage you to go back and listen to that because I think that that's an important subject. Um, but in this one, I want to talk about spiritual grooves. And, and in other words, you, you might say, all right, that's kind of about spiritual habits. That's sort of about, about life rhythms that we set up. Um, but, but it's based on the idea that the way that God made us is not that our lives are, are meant to be disordered, that we really thrive in a sense where there's order and stability in our lives. We thrive in a sense where we're cultivating habits and practices that give our lives the sort of grooves that bear fruit. Um, and, and, and while I can say, all right, we, we, we can't look at the Bible and say, all right, well, in the Bible, it directly tells us to sort of cultivate rituals and habits that are precisely the same. I, I think that we see enough in the Bible that models that this is just how God made us as people. We could go back as early as the commands about the Sabbath and say, all right, the Sabbath didn't rotate around which day it was. It was always the seventh day. And so there was this groove that God had set up for his people and for the people of Israel that you work these six days and then you have the Sabbath. There was that sense of groove. And then you had the feasts and the festivals that they would celebrate. And there were certain things that, that probably changed a little bit year to year, but a lot of it didn't. There, there were the same sorts of things that they did at the same time of year going into Jerusalem every year. Um, in fact, if you're familiar with the book of Psalms, you, you'll know that there's 15 Psalms sort of toward the end. I think it's uh, 120 to 134 that are all titled Psalms of Ascent. And these are Psalms that were sang by the people of Israel as they were heading to Jerusalem for festivals. And it was a sense of once again, bringing up, all right, the, these are the same songs we sing every year. You might feel like uh, as we just experienced Christmas time, it's like, yeah, we brought up some of the same songs that we sing every Christmas time. Hark the herald angels sing, joy to the world, angels we have heard on high, silent night. These, these songs come up and there's a sense of like, yes, this is appropriate. Every year we do some of these same things. Um, and even when you get into the New Testament, we do see this shift where we, we see the early church meeting in together a lot, but we see a specific thing happening on the first day of the week. And now we all worship on the first day of the week on, on Sunday. Um, but there was this sense of like, all right, th there's other things going on. It's not the only time that the church is worshiping or gathered, but that there's a special time that they have together on the first day of every week. And if you just look at any human culture, you, you have certain rituals. You know, we have fireworks on the 4th of July, and you have certain practices that are just a part of our lives, and we do that as families also. We have family vacations, and we have family traditions, and we have decorations that we put up. And for my family, we do a fire pit night at different times. We, we have different practices, different vacations, different habits. Sometimes couples have date night, where it's like every Tuesday is date night. We, we, we I think, should just pause to recognize this is part of how God made us. Um, we, we can talk sometimes about how just horribly destructive bad habits can be, but the fact that we can have a bad habit also points toward the idea that we can have a good habit. Bad habits are hard to break. Good habits are hard to break. Um, I, I hope that this doesn't come across as, as any kind of bragging because it's really not bragging at all. Um, I don't know the last time that I went a day without reading the Bible. Um, it, it's not even a big challenge anymore. And part of the reason that it's not a big challenge anymore is that that habit is now so ingrained that I'm not getting up every morning saying, you know what, do I read the Bible today? And if so, what do I read? I've set up grooves in my life that make that much more natural for me to do. Bad habits are hard to break. Good habits are hard to break. We want spiritual grooves, spiritual practices that help us to seek Jesus in a, in a way that's, that's much more sustainable and much more holistic. So, so here's what I want to do. Um, I, I, I want to talk about this. Hopefully you're on board. Hopefully you're seeing like, yeah, that would be a good thing. It would be a good thing to have sort of 
order to my life in a way that I'm not haphazardly trying to have a relationship with Jesus, but I'm, I'm more structured and I'm saying, all right, there's a bit more order to how I'm pursuing life in Jesus. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about um, three, I guess we'll call them pieces of advice, three pieces of advice for us if we're seeking to cultivate some of these spiritual grooves and spiritual habits that will be incredibly helpful to us. Um, so the first piece of advice is this, move from immediate to long term. And so what, what I mean by this is if we're thinking about grooves in our lives, um, we can start daily. That's the much more immediate. And we can say, all right, what are the things that every day I want to be a part of my life? Um, then maybe we'll move weekly. We might say, all right, th there might be some habits that are not everyday habits, but are important enough that I want to have them once a week. From there, we, we might even move monthly and say, well, may, maybe there's something that's that's on the monthly calendar that I'd want to put. Um, and then we might even go annually or quarterly to say, all right, maybe there's some other things that are a little bit more uh, of a big deal that I'm not going to do all the time, but I do once a year. So, so I'll give some examples of this. So let's say when we're talking about the daily, maybe we're talking about just things like I read the Bible and I pray. Um, I know right now it might not feel very creative to talk about reading the Bible and praying. There's a reason why this gets talked about so much. There is nothing we can do spiritually that replaces simply reading God's word and praying to him. There's different ways that we can do this. There's sort of different habits. Sometimes they're, they're sort of enmeshed with each other. Other times people pray and then read the Bible. Other times people read the Bible and then pray. So I'm, I'm not saying there's one exact way. What I'm saying is we shouldn't try to get away from this because it doesn't feel creative. There's a reason why this keeps coming up. So you might say, all right, yeah, I, I want to read the Bible and I want to pray every day. That, that feels like a practice that I should have every day. And, um, and, and there might be something else that you bring up for, for a daily habit. Maybe it has to do with your relationships where, where you say, hey, every day um, we're, we're going to look to have at least one meal together as a family. Or, or every day I'm, I'm going to look to um, at least have one sort of spiritual interaction with a friend, even if it's just a text message back and forth. So, so you might say, all right, th there are some daily habits to cultivate there. With the weekly habits, first of all, the first weekly habit that I would recommend that I think should be a default for all of us as believers is attending church worship services. You're saying, I, I am a part of my church. I don't treat it as optional. I don't say, hey, when I get around to it, I say, you know, Sunday is the day that the church that I belong to meets. I am there. There's going to be the rare exception where, oh, I'm out of town or I'm sick, but I, I'm not treating this as optional. This is a weekly groove that I have, and it's been a weekly groove that has been in place since the inception of the church. And so I'm going to set that up, and maybe there's something else that you set up on a weekly basis. Maybe you say, you know what, on, on a weekly basis, I... Um, I meet with an accountability partner or, or with a, a friend or I um, journal or that there might be something else. So you say, well, I'm not going to do this every day, but I'll do this once a week. Then you might move into monthly. You know, maybe monthly you say, you know, all right, monthly, I'm going to take a day and, and fast either for the whole day or for part of the day. Um, some of you might make that a weekly thing, but but some might say, I, I, I don't know, I'll make that a monthly thing. Um, and maybe even annually, May, maybe if you have sort of the resources and the opportunity to do this, maybe you say, you know what, annually, I wanna set things up where I can have sort of a, an extended spiritual getaway for a day or maybe even a weekend if I have a friend that has sort of a, a cabin up in Big Bear and I can get out to it and just have an extended time of refreshment before the Lord. So ho hopefully you can kind of follow this to say like, and, and I say move from immediate to long term because I think the, the daily things are the most significant. If you never got to the weekly and monthly and that that other stuff, it'd be like, all right, but, but if you can get that daily, if you can say, I've set up daily grooves where I'm seeking the Lord, that's going to bear a lot of fruit and then gradually move out there outward from there. And so a great project, especially as we're starting 2023, would just be to get a sheet of paper, prayerfully go into it and say, what are the daily grooves that I want to have as a part of my life? What are the weekly grooves that I want to have as part of my life? What are the you know monthly or quarterly? And what are the annually? If you're married, it'd be great. Maybe even if both of you, a husband and wife, go and do this, and then you come back together and talk about it because you might be able to help each other in it. Even with something like prayer, you might say, all right, I, I want to not just say I'm going to pray during the day, but you might say, all right, I'm, I'm going to pray in this place at this time um, and, and cultivate that I, I, I'm going to be in this chair or I'm going to be kneeling over here or I'm going to pray, you know, at 8 a.m. and at noon and then again at 7 p.m., whatever it is, or I'm going to pray for this amount of time. 
try to do, and again, this is, this is in the area of advice, not command, but try to do a lot of the decisions beforehand so that when you're in the moment, you can just be in the moment and you're not suddenly trying to make all of these decisions. So, so there you go. So start with the immediate and then move to the long term. That's piece of advice number one. Piece of advice number two is count the cost. Um, a, another way of putting this is be realistic. Um, Jesus talked about counting the cost before following him. I think that it's worth it for us to count the cost when we start to think of the spiritual grooves that we want to cultivate in our lives. So for example, I, I already mentioned fasting. This is not something we do a lot in the United States. So some of you, you, you might you might sort of get excited about this and you might say, you know what, I'm going to fast once a week. And you might be... It might be silly to use this analogy, but you might be biting off more than you can chew, or, or it might just be a lot to say, man, man, once a week, going from like, I've never done this, I don't have experience or habits with this, to I'm going to do this once a week, you might find yourself abandoning abandoning that quickly. So so it might be wiser to say like, all right, but well, maybe I start with once a month, and then I see how it goes, and I gradually see if I move this to once a week. Some of you might hear the whole, you know, Bible and prayer, and you might be saying, all right, that yeah, that's it. I should be reading my Bible every day. That That's a habit. That There's no day that's not the right day to read the Bible, so I should be reading my Bible every day. Yeah, that that absolutely is what we should eventually want to get to. But if you're at a point right now where you are never reading your Bible, you're just like, I I just don't have any habit cultivated in this area. I'm just going to say, if you suddenly say, now I'm going for every day, you're probably going to get frustrated with yourself. You're probably going to get frustrated because you're jumping from zero to 60 on that. And it might be wise just to count the cost and to say, you know, all right, I'm going to commit to reading the Bible three days a week. And you might even feel bad about that, feel like I'm gonna decide not to read the Bible the other days. I mean, you can still add on more, but but maybe you just start and say, I, I'm gonna count the cost. And moving from one to the other, it's, it, it's a big thing. Maybe you're looking at prayer and you're like, I, I feel like I should be praying for an hour every day. Well, nothing wrong with that. But once again, if you're going from nothing to saying, I'm gonna pray for an hour every day, I'm saying, well, maybe, maybe you start with 15 minutes. Maybe you start somewhere a, a little bit more realistic. And, and here's part of why I say this. And again, people are different, so not everybody's like me. Um, I, I have been sick of all of the times that I've made the grand commitment before God, here's what I'm gonna do. And just a couple of weeks later, I just stopped doing it. Um, I remember feeling this way all throughout high school, frequently throughout college, frequently in my 20s. And I feel like when you have enough of that happen, you have a couple ways that you can respond. And one way that you can respond is you can just keep doing it and keep getting frustrated with yourself and keep not following through. Um, A second way that you can respond is you can just be like, I'm never making a commitment ever again because I'm tired of failing. So if I don't commit, then I don't fail. But a third way and the better way I think that you can do things is you can cautiously continue to make commitments that you're pretty sure you are going to follow through on. And part of what I think goes on when we do these is is we we want to get into a groove. We want to get into a pattern where we're actually seeing positive things happen. So man, if you start off and you're like, you know, uh, I don't know. I know myself. I know how distracted I get. I know how frequently I abandon things. So if I make a commitment, in fact, I did this a, a while ago. I, I wanted to do some more journaling and I just knew, I said, if, if I commit to journaling every day, I will not do it. Um, I am not strong in that area. I'm not saying that that's good that I won't do it, but I just, I knew myself well enough to know I, I don't think that I will. And so I made a commitment to journal three days a week. And for the time that I decided to do that, I really did that. And there were other times that I decided to journal on an off day to just say, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I feel like I'm, this is bearing fruit in my life. So I'm going to keep doing this. So have the humility to recognize where you are and to recognize that it, it might be an incremental growth getting there. Count the cost before you make a commitment. Um, and also one of the things that I think is positive when you count the cost is it gives you the opportunity to deal with roadblocks. So so quick example on this. So, so let's say you're, you're looking at the month of January and you've come to the conclusion that you're just you're you're watching way too much TV, way too much Netflix, way too much streaming, and you're just like, all right, I, I'm just going to take the month of January, and I'm just not going to watch anything, so that I can really cultivate some more positive spiritual grooves. But then you remember that you're a big football fan, and you look at the fact that you're a big football fan, and that playoff football is in January, and you're like, yeah, I, I don't think I'll actually do that. I think that I'll abandon my commitment if I commit to do that. Well, well, here's the deal. There's actually, in my opinion, something positive in that and saying, all right, I, I probably won't do that. That gives you the opportunity to 
do any, a variety of different things. One of the things that you could do is you could say, all right, I'm going to choose to watch one or maybe even two football games each weekend. And then other than that, I'm not watching anything, which probably would still be largely in the spirit of what you're trying to do. Or it might make you say, you know what? I think watching football has become a little bit of an idol in my life. And so I, I realized the fact that I'm saying I'm not going to do this has made me realize I really need to do this. And so I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to sort of jump into the deep end and do this in the month of January when football is is at its height. And I'm just going to decide to to go ahead and do that. Um, it might allow you room to deal with heart issues. I want to say if you're about to make a commitment, think of all of the things that might get in the way. Think of the different things that will thwart you. It gives you a chance to pray through those things, gives you a chance to plan around those things. Some of you might look at the football thing and you might say, you know, I'm going to wait till March to tackle that because I, I just, I know myself and I'll abandon it and then I'll feel bad and then I won't want to start up again. Be willing to have the humility to know yourself well enough, to know your limitations and to count the cost and then to incrementally see God bring these grooves into your lives. Some of you are at a point where you're like, I, I got to just go for it. Oh, okay. Um, that there are times that that really works, but I want to say have the humility to be willing to see incremental growth in these areas. So that's the second piece of advice to count the cost before making the commitment. Um, and finally, the, the third piece of advice that I want to give that's connected to the second one is um, be okay with putting a timer on this. So, so let's say this, let's say you don't have the habit of reading the Bible you know that you should. And, and so let's say you you make the commitment. You say, I'm, I'm going to commit to reading the Bible three days a week. I'm just going to use the LBF Church Bible reading plan. And on those three days, choose the days in advance. I would say, don't just choose the three days. Say, I'm going to read the Bible on Sunday, on Tuesday, and on Friday, Wh whatever. Maybe your schedule makes it so that you feel like that. That's realistic. I'll do that. Um, and then just use the Bible reading plan. Even if you've missed days in between, who cares? J just go for it. Just read on those days. Um, as you're doing that, maybe you do that and you say, that's what I'm going to do for the month of January. And then after the month of January, I'm going to reassess. Um, if you're starting up fasting, and, and again, maybe some of you are like, I, I feel like I need to have times to fast and pray. So I'm going to do this once a week. My advice would be, if you're going to do it once a week, set a limit for when you're going to give yourself a chance to reevaluate. Because you might realize with just commitments you have, you're like, this, this maybe I'll get there eventually. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I'm quite there and, and I feel like I'm, I'm sort of running ragged doing this. So maybe you say, I'm going to do this for the month of January. I, I feel like in my life, I, I've learned, man, months are gifts from God. You know, these 30, 31 day periods of time where you can do something. I, I, years ago, we even, we did, we did a paleo thing for a month as a family. Um, I still remember what month it was in. And it was it was a long month. I decided to do it. I, I opted into something that my wife was doing. Um, it was good. When the month was over, I was done with it. But a, a month is is just this nice area of time where it's long enough that you really can cultivate a new habit and experience some fruit from it. But it's not so long that you're going to get deeply discouraged and say, I, I just can't follow through on this. So be willing to put a timer on some of these things. And one of the things that you might see is, again, with reading the Bible, you might say, I'm going to commit to reading the Bible three days a week. And that's what I'm going to do for the month of January. Man, there might be so much fruit that's going on in there that you say, you know what? In February, I, I'm committing to five days because I really think that this habit is taking root in my life. And you might get there faster than you think that you would. So there might be the positive sense. There might also be the sense where you say, all right, I committed to doing this. I, I committed to whatever, only three hours of watching stuff for a week or, or something like that. And then you get to the end of January and you're like, all right, that, that, I, I'm going to adjust that because I feel like that didn't quite cover what I want to do. Be okay with that. Be okay with deciding this is what the Lord has called me to do for this set amount of time. And I'm going to do that. Um, as I talk about this, I, I want to sort of recognize something. And here's what I want to recognize. Um, a lot of what I'm saying might feel like it's really kind of lowering the bar in some of these ways. Like you're saying like, all right, you're saying, don't worry if you're not reading the Bible every day and be willing to just do something for a month. And if you're not quite there, don't do it. And, and here's why I'm saying these things. I'm, I'm making an assumption here. Um, I, I'm making an assumption that right now I'm talking to people who love Jesus, want to follow Jesus, and are frustrated that often you don't follow through on the things that at one point in time you're convinced that you're supposed to do. And so what I want to say is just uh, uh, out of the way that you're seeking Jesus, 
be willing to recognize that we are still dealing with our fallen baggage. We're still dealing with frustrations and distractions. So what I'm not trying to say is lower the bar. What I am trying to say is three days of reading the Bible is better than an all or nothing because it often ends up nothing. So if you're like, I'm going to commit to every day and then I'm going to abandon it after a week and not read the Bible at all, man, I'd rather have you reading the Bible three days a week and just getting your foot in the door. If you're saying, hey, I'm going to fast once a week or it's not even worth it, and then after a week you just decide this isn't for me, man, I'd rather have you saying, I'm, I'm going to fast once a month and I'm going to see how it goes and allowing God to bear fruit for you in that, in that area of your life. Most of us probably should be consuming less media. But if you're like, hey, that's it, I'm just not watching anything else ever, you're probably not going to follow through. But if you say, you know, I'm going to take a month and, and allow myself to reset, you probably will follow through on that. Um, allow yourself to take the win on something that might not be as grandiose as you'd want it to be, because you recognize that we're still fallen people dealing with our brokenness. And the more we do, the more we get that foot in the door, the more that we allow God to work and renew us. And part of the hope in this is that we experience what Psalm 34, 8 talks about with to taste and see that the Lord is good. To say, man, there's three days of Bible reading. Suddenly you've got such a thirst for God's word that you can't wait for more. And now that you've kind of freed up your mind by not consuming so much Netflix and Amazon Prime and HBO Max, so that, that you're just like, now I, I, I want to keep that up. I, I want to keep up that idea of limiting that because it allows my mind to be more focused on Jesus. Allow yourself the humility to get the foot in the door, to take the win in this incremental process, and to see how God works in us. Um, I hope that you do this as we go into the new year. I do think that it's a great time to think about these things. And we want to set up in our lives grooves that help us seek Jesus, not by every day needing to sort of reestablish a new plan, but by setting these up so that we're able to fit into them, to move through them, and to experience the Holy Spirit working in our lives as we do so. Um, feel free, as always, to give comments or questions on this. Uh, we post all of our Christian Contrast episodes on YouTube, and so you can find those on the Life Bible, uh, Life Bible Fellowship Church channel, or you can just find them also all at uh, lbf.church on our website. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you want to recommend resources or ask about resources, feel free to do that. Um, we post episodes every two weeks, so I'll be back in two more weeks with the next episode. But thanks so much for taking the time to listen to the Christian Contrast, and I'll see you in two weeks.